Hi guys, welcome to Home Farm. We've had a couple of requests recently for a back garden tour, so that's what we're gonna do today. So just to quickly give you an overview of the back garden, it's a walled back garden. There's no side access to this garden. So everything that we do out here in the back garden has to come through the house. That is wheelbarrows, equipment, the whole shebang. So it can be quite a messy task. We've got three access points into the back garden. This is our main back door and our front door is directly in front of it through a hallway. So that's really dead straightforward and easy. So when you see the front door of our house on um, you know, our different content videos and things, basically this is in line with that. And then as you come out of the back door, we've got the garden room on my left and another little small French door on my right, which is to our TV room. And then what is supposed to be an art studio, but is rapidly becoming more of a greenhouse, um, is just there in front of me on my right too. So when we moved into this property about three years ago now, the entire back garden was gravel. So everything, that this gray kind of pebbly uh, stones that you see underneath me, this was the entire garden. Um, none of the raised beds existed. We put all of the planters raised beds in, um, all of this behind me was new we put in so it's really taken on a completely different life since we've been here and we just love it we've really put our stamp and our mark on this garden and it's really coming along nicely and progressing just as I wanted it to so the back door when we moved in, um, there was a winter jasmine, um, that's kind of like a yellow flower, it's quite a woody uh, climber, and it was planted in the ground, it was basically completely dead, there was no life in it, it was awful. Um, so we removed that, Mars built this really nice planter here, and we put in this gorgeous potato vine creeper. This went in about a year ago, and you can just see how much it has grown. It has just absolutely taken off. And I would highly recommend uh, potato vines for anybody that are looking. Uh, I think it's called potato climber, potato vines. There's lots of different names for it. But basically, um, if you do look for something, it's got normally got these bluey flowers on. I think they might have a white one, if I remember correctly. But we went for the blue, and I absolutely love it. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. It is a great climber um, for situations like this around doorways. Um, it really does take off and as I said this has only been in a year and when we purchased it it was literally about this big as a plant so it really does when it is happy it really goes bananas but what is so lovely about it is that it's an evergreen um, so you have this really nice leafy foliage nice and thick and dense foliage all year round which I really appreciate and um, in the summer you I think we get two uh, blooms off this so this is the first one it's already falling and dropping um, and I think the, the blooms have lasted probably about do you think about five weeks five or six weeks more? easily easily so about five or six weeks ha had huge amounts of flowers on it it's really lovely and what is particularly important for us we're in a 200 year old farmhouse so we really have to be careful about our brickwork and anything really attacking our brickwork and this does not attach itself to the bricks or to the wall it is on a climber a trellis um, which we put on and it attaches to the trellis it's really easy to manage it has not had any pest control issues um, so I would really just recommend this I think it's a gorgeous plant and very underrated and to be honest it was very cheap wasn't it I think that, that we only paid about five or six pounds yeah. for this so to five or six pound plant to give us this and we do have another trellis that's gonna we're gonna put in over the top and we're gonna hopefully just train this to kind of arch around and this one we uh, actually did have something different here um, last year, um, but when, now that we've seen how big this one's taken off on that side, it obviously makes sense that we have the same blue plant um, going up together. So we've put this in this year. It's already coming along really nicely, and I can't wait to see it. A couple of years from now, we're gonna have this huge mass of green leaves and blue flowers all the way over this archway of this door and I think it's gonna really look lovely. 
Over here we built a herb garden. We wanted, I wanted something that was going to be raised. We needed a little bit of difference in height. The whole garden was completely ground level, so it was really flat. So I wanted to start to bring in different dynamics of height, make it more interesting. And um, I wanted to create almost like a, a whole seating area. You could sit inside there, um, hopefully when, you know, well, this is already taking off this sage, but you know, as the years go by, this is just gonna get bigger and fuller and you'll really be able to come in and sit in there in the herb garden and have a coffee and just feel a little bit private and snug. Uh, this uh, olive tree uh, was an absolute steal. Um, we, we got it from Morrison supermarket and we weren't sure if we were going to get it in the car and the, the guy, I, I'm not entirely sure why, but he offered us a really, really good discount. Um, I think he wanted to get rid of it. Um, I don't know why. I think it was going to go anyway. Um, but when he offered us the heavy discount, we took it straight away and it's absolutely beautiful and it's coming along really nicely. It's in its own container which Mars uh, DIY built just with some decking wood and we've got some lovely ivy around it and some stocks which just smell so gorgeous. In our herb garden I'm just going to kind of roughly go through it. I think I'll actually do a different video which will just be a herb garden video uh, tour and we'll talk about every single herb we have and how we use it. Um, but as you can see we've got quite a good variety here. We have rosemary, sage, uh, chives, uh, we've got some lovage uh, and we use all of our herbs regularly. Um, I have let the sages bolt so when you bolt obviously it goes to flower um, and you don't really want your herbs to do that because when it does it can actually affect the taste of the herb make it a bit more bitter but honestly there is no way that we can use that many that much sage um, in our cooking we just don't require it so it doesn't really bother me too much if some of my herbs do bolt because I just think they're so pretty so they're there for culinary um, uses but also just because they're so beautiful. Here underneath the kitchen window we've got obviously the herb garden but we've also got this little area which I put in of grasses and crocosmias because I absolutely love crocosmias. They are really hardy, they give you beautiful, predominantly the colours you get off them are either reds, oranges or yellows. Um, they are just such an easy plant, they can tolerate water, they can tolerate dryness, I've, I mean everything I've chucked at them they can tolerate. They give you these beautiful green architectural uh, leaves which are so beautiful in a vase by themselves but then when they do start to flower if you cut them and use the flowers in a vase they can, lo they can last for ages I mean I can get 10 days to two weeks out of um, some crocosmias in a vase so um, I really love them though very very striking and such an easy plant. Over here in the pots this year we've got um, Alstroemerias. I'm trying to grow those for the first time. They're proving to be really really easy. And then our Nemesia, we put in quite a lot of Nemesia this year. I absolutely love it. Um, it start, this is Nemesia papaya. It started off as like a, a kind of um, a corally kind of pinky kind of color and as the season has progressed it's got darker and darker. We've gone from kind of yellowy corals to now into really deep reds that are coming out. Really interesting flower, very, very gentle to deal with, super easy, creeps it around everywhere, easy to cut back, not aggressive, and I have had absolutely no problems with pest control. I think one of them had a little bit of slug damage, but it seems to have bounced back and doesn't require deadheading so love the Nemesia papaya and in here we've just got some pink picassos some petunias I do love petunias but they are sticky on the hands and you know these ones haven't haven't actually required too much deadheading so I've appreciated that but just look at this pink paradise petunia my goodness the vibrancy of that pink and it has it's just not fading the more blooms it gets on it the more kind of vibrance it gets and they kind of that's the that's the palest it fades out to when they're really really young you can see when they're new they are just such a strong pink i absolutely love that Got a few pots um, in here this year. Uh, this is the convolvulus. Convolvulus. <laughs> I 
it's not an easy word to say. Um, so we've got this, which is really pretty. It's a little bit temperamental. It's a little bit fussy as a plant um, for us anyway in this climate. Um, but I have I've had better seasons and worse seasons with it. And again, in the back, we've got some nice petunias, uh, a couple of bacopas. We've got the tutti frutti over here, which I absolutely love, the lantana. And then in the back, I've got another Ostromeria. I've actually got a space in that pot for another Ostromeria, um, which has actually been delayed by the grower by two months now for the delivery. So I'm, st I'm still waiting to fill that, but eventually it'll turn up. This is a lemon, a lemon verbena. Highly recommend sticking a lemon verbena in your herb garden. If you don't have one, try and get one. It's a very, very easy plant to look, uh, look after. Um, really gorgeous smell off the leaves. Um, I absolutely love the smell of verbena. It did get aphids. It had an infestation of aphids on the tips of the plant. So I actually chopped uh, the tips off and you can see all of this new growth has come through in the last week. So actually uh, pinching out almost your verbena is really not a bad idea. So if you've got one and it's looking a little bit leggy, I would recommend snipping the tops off and seeing how much bushier it gets. Coming down to the far end of the garden, we've obviously got gorgeous uh, views of the farmland and the sheep and it's absolutely lovely to have that right there. Uh, we've got, uh, this is the end walled uh, part of the garden and this is where we've got uh, a couple of hostas along here. This is our biggest hosta here. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I love this. I don't know what variety it is. Uh, I'm sorry, but as you can see from the leaves, the leaves really do get big um, and they're absolutely a beautiful color. In fact, if you know what hosta this is, please let me know. And then next to the hosta, I put in a couple of um, uh, Amistad salvias. I really love salvias, though this one has been absolutely devoured by slugs and we've just done a Nema slug treatment on it uh, yesterday. So hopefully that will start to bounce back. But I really love salvias. We've got a lot of salvias in our garden. I think they're a great plant really hardy, really easy to look after and um, the flowers you get off them are just beautiful and really in my kind of colour range that I like all the different blues and purples and things so you get so many different types of blues of salvia everything from the you know kind of purple blues lilacs ice blues so if you're looking for kind of the blue kind of range of flowers uh, flowering plants have a look at salvias they've got some really lovely ones Above here on the wall, we've just got an evergreen hydrangea um, climber. So that should take off for us. I think it's only a second year, so it's still quite small. And then a nice ivy on that side. And then we've got this really nice flower bed that is in here. Another salvia here. Uh, this is this is still Amistad, but look, at this one's a lot happier. It hasn't had, it's still got a little bit of slug damage, but not as much. And look how much taller it is. It's really happy. And here I've got a cannula uh, lily, a red one that's coming out. I think the contrast is so lovely. And that kind of purpley kind of color leaf with the um, Amistad salvia is a really nice combination. And next to it, we've got some uh, campanula. Um, and here, We've got fuchsias coming up all, of, all along here um, and some nice hardy geraniums. Bamboo is becoming a bit more of a controversial plant in gardens nowadays and I have to say I can completely understand why because they do want to go absolutely bananas and go everywhere. Um, a lot of the bamboos, well I think all of the bamboos were here when we moved in, we didn't add any. Um, and then this is a lovely uh, well, actually, I think there's a Campania and Lavellia under here somewhere. Um, but this is a lovely uh, blue geranium. I think this is Roxanne um, blue hardy geranium. And again, highly recommend if you're looking for a hardy plant that will survive cold winters and come back for you the next year. They come back and they really do come back nicely with lots of flowers and a good size as well. Over here we've got a couple of blue lobelias coming up um, and then when we very first moved into the property um, I actually had some nigella uh, that was growing in my grandfather's garden and when we took the bay leaf tree I also um, 
got some managed to get some of the nigella seeds from his garden so this is kind of almost sentimental to me it's a little bit random and rogue <laughs> it's not really in the right place but i don't really mind it it's kind of you know a bit wild a bit natural and um it just whenever i see it and it blooms it really reminds me of his garden so it's just special so i don't remove it and then i think we've even got a forget me not in here i'm not entirely sure why this <laughs> this bed has gone as rogue as it has but it's all in the blue tones it kind of works I'm not a very regimented gardener I kind of like to be as relaxed as possible with things still looking tidy and controlled but you know if you've got a nigella growing right next to a labellia or something it just kind of gives you kind of more of that relaxed feel in your garden and you know helps you and just enjoy the space and then this whopping great eucalyptus tree be, beware when planting eucalyptus trees. Um, this was here when we got here. Um, we did not plant it, though we um, are guilty of planting eucalyptus trees. In fact, we put them into the last two properties that we had, um, not realizing just how huge they get. They go a mammoth. So if you're going to plant a eucalyptus tree, plant it with caution. Plant it in somewhere that it really can just go bananas um, the root system is really big um, it can damage walls and fences so just be aware of where you're going to be putting it and you know be prepared or you can start to top it that's what I'll be doing with the eucalyptus uh, trees that we've got in containers we put them in because they're in containers and also I can just top them and keep them more as a standard tree and not let them get this big but we are trying to control this one but I don't want to remove it because I just love it and again it's an evergreen tree it gives me beautiful foliage all the year round so I'm kind of really reluctant to get rid of it yet so if you're looking for a plant that is going to give you really strong wow factor fragrance um, that is going to be really easy look after itself uh, go to about six foot uh, and can handle um, being in a shady spot in its feet and a sun spot and it's in, going up to a sun spot then i would highly recommend a spanish broom you get lots of different types of broom you get scottish brooms um, and you get different types of broom brooms like Spanish brooms but this is an actual fragrant Spanish broom it's not that easy apparently that's what people have told me to, for them to find fragrant brooms so it is worth holding out for um, a garden center that can supply you with a fragranced bro uh, broom <laughs> A lot of brooms um, but when you do get one it's really worth getting your hands on because my goodness this plant can literally fragrance the whole of this back garden it is such a strong smell it's kind of a bit like a jasmine so you have to like jasmine uh, that jasmine kind of smell but my goodness it is a beautiful beautiful plant Moving down the garden, we've got a lovely mock orange, so beautifully scented. Um, again, I do trim this quite, I do about half of it. I cut about half of it out every uh, winter. I think this year I'm actually gonna not do that with a lot of my plants. I'm actually gonna wait and only prune them in spring um, because I have seen quite a lot of feedback from other gardeners saying that when they prune things in winter, you're kind of doing it at the when the, the plant, even though it's dormant, is actually then very susceptible to winter diseases. So I actually did have, I tried out um, that experiment this year on a couple of hydrangeas and the one that I was pruned in spring, has performed so much better and bounced back and grown so much stronger than the hydrangea that I actually pruned in winter. So I'm thinking that I'm actually gonna do the same with the mock orange this year. Then down here, we've just got this really delicate kind of almost like a raindrop flower here. Um, it's gonna be a really nice orange when it opens. These are closed blue, uh, blooms at the moment but when they open they kind of almost like look a bit like a fuchsia kind of um, flower um, it's, I think it's called Indian summer this one and it's lovely orange um, with a very very simple foliage it kind of looks very similar foliage to kind of like a salvia or a, um, yeah not a pentamen a salvia um, so nice plant though if you can get your hands on it it looks very striking when the orange blooms open Coming down, we've got Mexican orange. Uh, Mexican orange is a very 
funny plant for me. Um, Mexican oranges are um, acid lovers. Our soil is very heavy alkaline, it's like pH 8 or 9, um, and that means that we've got plants like, for example, your camellia, your magnolia, um, and your Mexican orange does not like heavy alkaline soil, so these poor things really really struggle so I have to amend a lot around the base of the plant um, and I have done that but unfortunately I think I'm losing a lot of them there were four in this garden I've already lost two I've got one down there at the other end absolute disaster on its last last legs and I have amended and I have followed lots of advice lots of instructions spoken to my local garden center followed their advice as well and nothing's really worked these little white flowers pack such a punch of kind of like a orangey, citrusy kind of smell. Very, very lovely, very fresh, very fragrant. And um, whenever we have visitors over and they walk past this when it's in bloom, they always stop and say, oh, what's that? That's so lovely. So it's a, a plant that's really worth having in the right conditions. And then underneath, we've just got these lovely little annuals. They were called balloon flowers uh, because they do actually look like little balloons when they before they've opened. And then they open up like this very very pretty this flower bed was here when we um, arrived it is a real water hog of a, uh, a bed uh, as soon as we get any rain it starts flooding really quickly the drainage is awful um, we are trying to deal with that at the moment um, but because I knew that um, and I started to notice that quite quickly I started to put in plants or their previous um, owners have put in plants like these grasses um, and this kind of uh, almost cactusy succulent kind of plant. I'm not sure what the name of this is, but they were not loving how much water was being retained in this area. So I started to put in plants that do like a lot of water. So your irises are a really good, you've got like a waterlogged kind of part of your garden and you're looking for something to put in. Um, irises are great. Um, a lot of irises you can even get that actually will live in a pond or on a pond edge um, and then other ones that would just tolerate lots of water. So the irises are absolutely loving it here. On this side of the flower bed, the, the land is a very uh, gentle, you probably can't even notice it on film, but the land actually steeps away that way. So the water kind of runs off and collects underneath the irises. But this side is a lot more controlled in how much water it gets. Um, so I actually popped in some coleus this year. I've never had coleus before. Um, it's very, very striking. Um, and I just think it's a really interesting plant. So I've just popped in three. I think that they, it was in a pack like that and I popped them in together here. Oh, actually there's a fourth one here. It's a four in a pack. Um, that one's not as happy, um, but they are very, very interesting and striking. So if you're looking for something that has kind of a lot of different um, colors going on with the leaf and it is just the le a leaf um, plant, there's not gonna be any flowers on this, um, but I kind of like it here with the fern. Um, I think we've got some, Procosmia, a different type of Procosmia, and then behind it, we've got this lady's mantle, and I think that it's, the coleus is really lovely with the lady's mantle. It's that same kind of lime, kind of green kind of colors going on, and I think it's just such a nice plant, lady's mantle, really soft and gentle, and I find it growing in our driveway. It's almost like a weed. It can just grow anywhere. So if, again, if you're looking for something soft, um, easy to grow, um, ladies mantle is a really good option then here we've got black lace elder or black elder very very easy to grow plant uh, gives you these really beautiful kind of light pink uh, blooms off it and really deep you, the new growth starts off as a little bit green but then it really does go with this really deep kind of black purpley kind of color um, so it really gives you a nice contrast if you're going to put it in and put it into next to something that's got a really nice lime green you're going to get some really nice kind of textures going on in the garden so here we've got a lady's mantle next to it on this side and then we've got some nemesia papaya um, some penstemons and this is a jacob's ladder um, it's really nice plant very very simple it's actually a wild native plant to england um, very beautiful very delicate um, and very easy to grow 
And then another salvia here that I've tucked in this year, it's the first year uh, for it, so it just went in a couple of months ago. And a very delicate kind of blue, very beautiful with little soft leaves. And then above the uh, blue salvia, we've got this gorgeous Japanese Acer. This Japanese Acer, when we moved into the property three years ago, was this tall, I kid you not. So it has quadrupled in size since we got here. Absolutely gorgeous plant. Uh, I just can't get enough of Acer's in general. I think they are really, really striking. Uh, this one goes through at least four, maybe five different tones of colors through the year. It goes lime green, yellow, uh, yellowy white, orange, red. I mean, everything. I mean, it's just a beautiful kind of rainbow plant. So it gives you so many different points of interest throughout the whole 12 months. Another mock orange here which is kind of a little bit overbearing, um, but I kind of like it because it's kind of hiding um, our shed a little bit. Oh, the smell is so gorgeous. Um, and then next to it, we just got this really nice deep blue iris, uh, really, really pretty color uh, iris, almost like a purple blue and just really striking here in this corner. And then uh, a new, a new newbie uh, to the garden this year is this uh, bottle brush uh, tree. Uh, it's a standard and it looks just like a bottle brush, South African plant. Uh, again, very hardy, can tolerate up to minus 20 Celsius um, and will be is also an evergreen. And then in the summer, it just flowers this lovely kind of striking kind of pinky red colors. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that kind of growing and taking this space up a bit more. And then underneath, I've got a double petunia um, not very common uh, for, for me to see double petunias in our area available anyway um, but I did see this one and I got it and I love it it's almost kind of got to me it kind of looks like a flamenco kind of dress or something it's really really packs in a lot of uh, petals into one little flower so um, really beautiful lovely plant that one and then in between just some impatience some deep pink red impatience to match with the bottle brush then in this flower bed is, we've got on the back side of the acer so there's just some really nice kind of grasses and palms going on here um, another lady's mantle underneath here um, some nemesia papaya uh, so lots of things, nice things happening here. And then another iris here, native iris. And then another uh, Jacobs, Blue Jacobs ladder here, different variety, uh, more of a kind of a soft green uh, foliage on the leaf. Uh, see if we can get you a nice flower so you can see when they do open, they have this really pretty little yellow pollen center and just really, delicate and lovely. Another little concrete uh, pot that we put in there made a little pond. Um, there is a Louisiana iris coming up in there and we've got a few pond plants in there as well which kind of give us some nice pink foliage um, and flowers through the summer. These topiary balls were here when we moved in, the buxus, um, they do need a trim and then behind them we've got the banana plants and some more grasses and flax and just a really nice tropical vibe going on in this particular um, bed and no flowers at all i don't think and then finally we're kind of back to uh, the back door area and we've this has got our two uh, big planters and um, these are the ones eucalyptus trees that i mentioned earlier so we've got two big planters that uh, are just really nice nicely framing this uh, little uh, French door. Eucalyptus here, eucalyptus gunny, um, and then salvias here in the front. And this one is a labellia, and he is so unbelievably happy. When I bought this last year and put him in, he was about this big and stayed about that big for the entire summer. So I didn't expect it to come back and get any bigger. But this year he has come back and he is, I would say about three or four times the size. He's absolutely huge. And he's also growing big shoots off 
the actual big stem. So I think we're actually going to get um, some kind of vertical things coming off these horizontal branches. So I think it's really going to fill up this space. This blue salvia, I absolutely love it. It's been really, really hardy. Um, I cut it back in the winter. It's come back really well again this summer and it for me it just mimics kind of a lavender uh, vibe and I just think it's so gorgeous really high impact and as you can see the way that it spills out the front of the containers really has that kind of nice lavender feel to them so that concludes our garden tour i hope that it's given you um, a really nice feel for our back garden and kind of the layout a couple of our followers were confused as to where are you standing where are you so i hope that it kind of helps you feel more at home when you're watching us and gives you some insights into what's working for us what's really really taking off what's struggling what I'm struggling with um, and I just hope that you have a really beautiful summer and your garden is filled with lots of flowers and you are able to really enjoy your space this summer as well so if you enjoyed this video please subscribe and ring the bell uh, I hope to see you on our next video thanks for watching and happy gardening